Let's talk about the snap elections in Japan. Last weekend, the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe crushed the opposition in a landslide victory. It was an endorsement of Abe's leadership, and his coalition could even change the nation's pacifist constitution. So, Shindo, let me start with you on that. How much concern is there in China that any changes in the Japanese constitution could result in what the Washington Post called the return of a militaristic Japan? Well, you know, after the change to the constitution, if that's successful, you know, whatever happened in Japan, uh, you know, people in China, I think China as a whole, uh, in general, don't see there's a possibility of the repeat of like atrocities committed by the Japanese militarism during the Second World War. Um, you know, as uh, now we know, like China's economy is uh, like a, a, a two times that of Japan, and of course with the modernization, the modernization of the Chinese military. So there's a uh, no, no, no fear of like uh, anything happened like uh, you know uh, seven decades ago. And secondly, I think the well, there's still the concern obviously from the Chinese side. The concern is uh, really coming from this lack of faith in the Japanese government overall. Uh, you know, for many Japanese governments, uh, you know, their senior officials sometimes they would come out and say like uh, you know, Nanjing uh, massacre does not exist. They will talk about the comfort women, uh, comfort women issue, like uh, sex slaves. They said that's a fake. You know, they volunteer to do so. Always, obviously, South Korea is uh, uh, very outraged with that issue too. So there's a lack of faith uh, uh, in the Japanese government, uh, and uh, you know, but. Uh, Concerns will be obviously there in China, in South Korea, and in other countries. Right. But uh, I think if uh, Abe managed well, obviously with this super majority yeah. in the House, uh, I mean, it, 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 he will go ahead, probably. Paolo, what was the significance of this massive victory? Uh, what is it that drove the Japanese people to vote in such large numbers? Well, I, th I, I suspect that it is really the, the North Korean issue that is kind of looming large there. And uh, the fact that, that, quite frankly, also that the Japanese opposition was quite divided. In fact, they did extremely badly. Uh, let's not forget, ironically, that as uh, far back as only a few months ago in August, people were saying, oh, Abe may not last. His popularity is so low, this may plunge, if he has to resign or something, he, this will plunge Japan into a political crisis. You know, fast forward two, three months later, he's uh, Mr. Big Guy, he won another, you know, great election, etc. I'm not sure that this is a personal endorsement uh, for Mr. Abe of his, you know, grandiose leadership. Japan is doing okay, the economy is all right, but it's not, you know, many of his uh, great promises. You remember the Abenomics? Yep. Well, that didn't happen. It really didn't happen the way at least he portrayed it long ago. Uh, and here what we have is perhaps the people rallying around the, the traditional bastion of Japanese politics, the Liberal Democratic Party, you know, to, to face uh, this, uh, you know, very difficult new situation, which is North Korea and, and nuclear weapons. And yes, there is the issue of amending the Constitution, which is, which Abe certainly has uh, talked about. Uh, which you know, is linked very closely to that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think he has, that's probably the, the main drive driver that led him to this, uh, to, to call right. the snap election and have uh, the majority, essentially, the supermajority reconfirmed. And now he's free from uh, political concerns, right. even though his mandate as prime minister is not a sure thing. There's the Congress of the party, right. which may or may not reconfirm him as leader. So he may okay. have won the election, but not everything. <laughs> he's got a few hurdles to cross. John, what do you think? Was this about security? Was this about changing the constitution? Uh, I very much see this as a national security election. Uh, and it's North Korea, I think, is the predominant security problem that Japan faces. But I do think that there is the possibility of growing tension between Japan and China over the disputed sovereignty of the Senkaku Islands. The Chinese have made very plain that they see Senkaku differently than Japan does. So I think it's those twin issues, North Korea obviously dominating the headlines. But I think also you're seeing politically inside of Japan the end of the era of pacifism. Yeah. The idea that Japan has quote unquote self-defense forces when it really has a very robust muscular land, sea, mm -hmm. and air capability. Um, I think China may want to just take a double look and see. I, I agree with your prior speaker, mm -hmm. uh, our fellow panelist here, that I don't see the rise of a militarism that you saw back in the right. 1920s and 30s. Okay. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have serious security tensions between 
Japan, China, and North Korea, right. depending on the behavior of Pyongyang. But I think the Senkaku Islands, we need to watch very, very carefully between the two countries. Okay, Shindo, very quickly, I've got 15 seconds. What will China do if Japan changes its constitution? Well, I think if Japan decided to go ahead, uh, you know, there are actually a lot of difficulties uh, to go through this process because you also need uh, another referendum, national referendum. You need a simple majority to endorse that mm -hmm. after it passed the, uh, you know, the House uh, for the amendment. And uh, I don't think there's not very much for China to do, for South Korea to do. Of course, you can continue to express uh, your, you can persuade the international government to share your concern, I guess. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Gentlemen, thanks to all of you. Nanjala, thanks to you as well.